Hi guys, we're going to start with the first chapter. In physics and that's force for you. So starting with a force, the chapter called force. Right, in force, the first answer which you're going to study about is about the linear and the rotational motion, the types of motion. If I'm the body and I'm moving in a straight line, like I'm moving this way, straight, linear, rectilinear, we say that the body is free to move. And when a body is free to move, it's moving in a linear path. Such a motion is called translational motion or linear motion or rectilinear motion. But when a body rotates about the axis, yeah, oh, it's just rotating about the axis. It can't move freely. I'm sorry, I'm stuck up. I am bound somewhere, right? I am stuck up somewhere. I am pivoted somewhere. Pivoted means hinged. Hinged means riveted. Riveted means I am not free to move. Something is holding me. I am just moving round and round about the axis. So keeping it simple as my first answer in the first chapter called force. All right. So if I talk about the linear motion, we call it as a translational motion. The body is free to move. Yeah, I'm just writing the keywords. Not fixed. It's not pivoted. It's free to move. And if I talk about, if I talk about a rotational motion. Yeah, rotational motion students, a body is pivoted. And it rotates, it rotates about the axis. Which we call it as the axis of rotation, something like this. Body is moving in a circular path. And this is like an imaginary axis. Yep, that's how it moves, round and round. Now, my second answer. We talk about a lot of, a lot of rotational part now in this chapter. So we are going to study about the next answer, which we call it as the moment of force. Moment of force, the other name is the torque, which we also call it as the turning effect. So either you call it as a moment of force or you call it as a torque or you call it as a turning effect. It means the same thing. Let's understand this. It's beautiful. Let's take a, a non-rigid body, some random body. I've taken some random body. All right. It is pivoted out here. It is fixed out here. It can't move freely. I'm sorry. It can only rotate about this axis. Ah, this. This point is called a pivot and this is called the axis of rotation. Fine. So the body is fixed, clamped out here. There is, um, let's say there is a handle out here. Oh, okay, a handle or it's just some sort of a, you know, a, 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 a point where I can push or pull the object. Right. What I do is I plug the handle and I either push the object or I pull the object. So at this point, at this point, I apply force. So this is called, it is called a point of application of force. Yes, point at which the force is applied. Now, the, the beautiful part is, have you ever seen a door? A door, yeah, uh, a normal door. Uh, the handle may be placed anywhere, actually. So if I try to analyze a door, right, it looks something like this in which there is a hinge out here where the door is clamped, fixed. Sometimes a carpenter may make a handle out here or he may make a handle out here. It doesn't make difference, but the handle can be anywhere along this imaginary line, right? It all depends upon the height of the person where he wants to make a handle. However, on a similar note, the point of application can be actually anywhere, anywhere on this imaginary line. And we call it as a line of action of force. 
it's it's a line where any any point out here definitely inside the body where you apply a force the turning effect is going to be the same the turning effect will remain the same fine i have selected this point as the point of application of force and the perpendicular distance the 90 degrees okay it is the distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of force which i call it as d so if this is a diagram i will say that the moment of force the turning effect of force represented by m it is the product it is the product of the magnitude of force and the perpendicular distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of force you're not going to buy heart it sorry can i say the moment the turning effect is the perpendicular distance it is a product product of the magnitude of force and the perpendicular distance between this line and this line which i have written force is measured in newton distance is measured in meter so newton meter is nothing but the si unit of force and the cgs unit of force newton is replaced by dyne in cgs system and meter is replaced by centimeter so i guys i can say that the si unit of the moment is newton meter and the cgs unit is dyne centimeter now obviously there has to be a relationship between them yep i know i'll start with the same formula moment is equal to fs all right guys one newton meter is nothing but one newton into one meter come on i just have broken the one as one into one oh obviously one newton ninth standard physics second chapter or third chapter I don't exactly remember but the laws of motion yeah one newton is 10 raised to 5 dime and one meter all of you all is 100 10 raised to 2 centimeter so i am gonna have 5 and 2 10 raised to 7 dime centimeter and that's the relationship for you all the relationship between newton meter and dying centimeter 10 raised to 7 from here can i say that the moment the moment of force this is the formula yep can i say the moment depends upon two factors it depends upon the magnitude of force and it depends upon the perpendicular distance so i can say more the force more is the moment directly proportional more the distance between both of them more is the turning effect directly proportional but but it is said that if the handle is kept very close to the pivot usually when you see a door the handles are always kept apart quite at a good distance from the hinge or the pivot because because force and distance are inversely proportional that means if the distance between the pivot ah that is the axis of rotation and the point and the line of action of force increases if this distance increases can i say the force to be applied decreases because force and distance are inversely proportional that's why whenever a hinge and the handle are quite apart from each other i can easily pull the door who but if they are close i need to apply more force to pull or push the door that's that's why the handles are always located almost at the edges of the partitions right guys fine so this was about the factors affecting moment we studied a lot we studied about linear translational motion we studied about the moment of force the si unit cgs unit relationship and the factors affecting moment of force and, and of course it's one of the give reasons more the distance less is the force applied come on inverse proportionality that's why the the line of action of force and the axis of rotation should be away from each other right just go through it many more things to encounter further the next part is about the convention of the forces whenever you apply a force on an object yep the object which is pivoted of course okay i apply a force to this object can i say the object is turning in a clockwise direction the force is not clockwise don't mismatch the words the force 
acts in the upward direction but the rotation the turning effect is clockwise we call such a moment a clockwise moments and if the force acts in this direction the the moment will be anti clockwise the anti clockwise moments are considered to be positive conventionally and the clockwise moments are taken to be negative now you ask me sir what is convention look it's like um, don't we say in in physics in electricity current always flows from a positive terminal to a negative terminal electrons flow from a negative terminal to a positive terminal this is convention we need to accept it right we can't see it but we accept it similarly just to keep a uniformity in in the universe yeah what we say is that the anti clockwise moments are considered to be positive you treat them as positive moments with a plus sign and those moments who are turning clockwise are treated considered yep to be negative remember about this one all right after this we talk about the next concept which is a couple okay what exactly is a couple the name itself suggests couple couple means two forces equal in magnitude opposite in direction which are needed to produce that turning effect so i will say couple is nothing but two forces which are equal in magnitude value should be the same but but opposite in direction not along the same line sorry i'll explain this just wait for a moment producing a turning effect that's what a couple is now remember one thing when i'm pulling a door okay just let's make this let, let's make this simple for you all okay a door this is a handle and these are the hinges of a door okay so i can say this to be a hinge or a pivot and this is the handle of the door now listen to me very cautiously when i try to pull the door okay pull the door let's say in the outward direction not downward outward direction my i feel that i am the god i am pulling the door it's my force which is acting on the handle and the door is coming towards me rubbish it's actually not 100% is you who does it it is also the hinge who plays a very vital role the pivot plays a very vital role you know what happens if i apply a 5 newton force to pull the door in the outward in the towards me this direction right the hinge produces an equal force the force which is equal in magnitude that is 5 newton and it will act in the inward direction that means listen listen i can't see this this happens the hinge pivot helps me to do the work so if i pull my force is in this direction the hinge is going to apply exert a force which is equal in magnitude opposite in direction to what i have applied so if i am applying in this direction the hinge will apply in this direction it's going to be opposite but the magnitude remains the same so i feel i feel that 5 newton is sufficient to open the door but actually the door is getting a force of 10 newtons how much 10 bloody newtons in order to open itself right so it's always that hinge that extra factor which is helping me out okay without any need yeah without any you know want the hinge is helping him out helping me out it's my friend right so this is called couple so couple are two forces they don't act along the same line my force is along this line and the hinge applies a force along this line so they both are not along the same line i hope you have understood this and they produce a turning effect talking about the next answer which is a moment of couple okay for a moment of couple we have a small proof quickly going through it so if i talk about um, a something like an equilibrium 
pivoted at the center O. One force is acting in downward direction, other acting okay, um, in the upward direction. Okay, one force upward, another force downward. So can I say, let me call this as F1, F2. This point is A, this point is B. Let this much distance, the distance between the force and the pivot be D1. And this should be distance D2. So if I talk about the turning effect, I'm asking you, find the moment of force. It is going to be first. Let's talk about this force. It goes this way. Can I say it is an anti-clockwise moment? We always have to reach the pivot. My destination is always going to be the pivot from the force. So it is going to be F1 into the distance D1. That is anti-clockwise, remember. What about this force? Oh guys, even this is anti-clockwise. So it's going to be plus, both are positive. F2, that is force into the distance. I need to reach the pivot, D2. The forces are equal because here I have said for a couple, the forces are equal in magnitude. So can I say F1 is equal to F2, let's say is equals to F. So I'm going to have F into D1 plus F into D2. Perfect. What is common? According to mathematics out here, F is common. Bracket, you're going to be left with D1 plus D2. D1 plus D2 is the total distance AB. That's going to be F into AB. So can I say the moment of force, actually it's not force, it is called the moment of couple. I would rather say that. Not force, the moment of force is just F into D. The moment of couple is the product of either of the forces. It's either this or this. That is product of either of the forces and the perpendicular distance between the two forces. Isn't AB the perpendicular distance between the two forces, right? That's moment of couple for you. All right, I talk about my next concept is about equilibrium. Now what's equilibrium guys? Exactly. Equilibrium means there is a body. Several forces are acted upon by a body. Several forces. So can I say a body is under the influence affected by several forces? Oh my God. Oh my God. But still the body does not move. It is very much adamant, stagnant, stable, stringent, rigid. Fine. It's perfect. So can I say when a body is under the influence of many forces, but it does not change its state, we say that the body is in equilibrium. So I'm just writing the keywords. Under the influence of several forces, but doesn't move, that is, doesn't change its state. We, said that, we say that the body is in equilibrium. So I can say when a number of forces, a number of forces are acting on a body, okay, a number of forces are acting on a body, it produces no effect on the body. That means if a body is in a state of rest, it will continue to remain in a state of rest, all right? And if a body is in motion, it will be in a state of motion in that same direction. And that we say it as equilibrium. There are two types of equilibrium. We have static equilibrium and we have dynamic equilibrium. So if I talk about static equilibrium, when a body is at rest, even after the body is under influence of many several forces, still the body will be at rest. And that's called static equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium, when a body is in motion, in spite of many forces affecting it, the body will continue to remain in a motion in the same bloody direction. Hence, we say that the body is in dynamic equilibrium, right? So guys, 
go through this portion last part of the a part last section concept of the a part of this chapter we have started uh, giving those videos on a saleable purpose on a very cheap rate though and in order to purchase those videos you can contact on double seven one zero eight seven triple one eight uh, I have mentioned the details at the bottom which will be scrolled down or you may even send us a mail at shamcaps36 at the rate gmail.com in order to get access to the videos for 10th as of now ICSE, CBSE and um, SS not only for the school section guys but we Shamal Kapadia and the team is also gonna approach in the college section as well for 11th and 12th standard to start with the HSC board, the Maharashtra board, followed by the ISC, the A levels, and so on. We will be soon coming with those educational parts also. But as of now, guys, yes, a slow and steady process. We start with the 10th and even slowly the 9th and the 8th. So definitely you may spread a word along uh, to your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, or whomsoever. It's going to be helpful, these videos. And now onwards, you're going to get regular updates with me and my team on Shamko Grassroots Educare. Do subscribe, do like the channel, my friends, and see you.